stopped in at Bruce Logan's shop to see his 34 Ford that um, he had built initially in 1963 mm -hmm. and uh, sold it and then so, bought it back. How many years later did you buy it back? 39 years later. 39 years later. And the incredible part is it was virtually untouched. It was as you had sold it. A few minor things done in the interior part of it, but other than that, everything is the same as the day I sold it in 1973. Wow. Um, so when you initially built the car, I mean, that was an era when you just didn't open up a catalog. You had to be creative. You had to be creative. A lot of junkyard trips because that's what Hot Rod Magazine told us to do. You go to your junkyard, the local junkyard, and you'll be able to find this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. When it comes to brakes, hubs, steering gears, transmissions, all those things you could purchase quite reasonably at right. a junkyard. Right. But, uh, I mean, uh, so the inspiration came from any particular car? Did you read magazines, or was there the a reason for the... The inspiration came from the picture over your shoulder that was a friend of mine, That not, not that particular car, but one just like it. I'm 14 years old, working in my dad's Pond Ma market, and that gentleman that owned a, a little roadster like that with a 265 Chevrolet V8 in it would stop Wednesday evenings and buy some beer and some cigars, and I'd have to run out and look at the car because I, mm -hmm. I basically, I just, liked hot rods at that time. I mean, I was, I was into hot rods. Right. Prior to that, I, I lived at a, in, a, in a place where there were stock car racetracks on both sides of us, and that was an inspiration as well. Mm -hmm. The old coupes and um, they called them jalopies in those days. Right. Yeah, I went to all those races, as, as many as I could go to. Right, right. Yeah. But I mean, um, you know, the cars were somewhat practical too, right? I mean, you, you know, it wasn't like you built a show car. No, I, I didn't. I didn't, I couldn't afford the, the, all the amenities, the luxuries that a lot of guys could. I, I just didn't have that kind of resources. So I did what most guys, you know, when I say most guys my age, a lot, a lot, there were a few that built the, the real show pieces, but not too many. Most of them were just get in and go. Right. So, I mean, what was the thought process in those days? I mean, I know when I was young, it was drive as much as possible. Well, yeah, this was this actually was my first car. I'm, I'm graduated out of high school, and I used my dad's Volkswagen to get point A, point B. I had a girlfriend. So this was basically my first car uh, that I built through the summer of 63. As we got into spring of 64, I purchased another car to get me to vocational school. I, I, I took part in a um, apprentice program at vocational school. So I, didn't need, I needed to get from home to there and, and I bought a 61 Chevy Impala bubble top. Mm -hmm. and. Um, that was our family car for a number of years. Right. But this was the, this was the hot rod. The Sunday, I mean, what, Sunday what happened car. when the snow flew? Did, was there salt an issue back in those days? Yeah, but I didn't drive this in the winter. No, no. it would, would have never worked. I drove my dad's Volkswagen until oh, spring, yeah. spring of 64. Then I bought the 61 Chevy. I gotcha. Yep. So um, when you built the car now, I mean, it just basically was junkyard runs. Uh, the body came from, where did came it come? came from a barn in Appleton. came from a barn. Okay. I heard about it in high school. And I didn't, I was still in school, so I didn't pursue it. But after high school, I really, I thought I'd like to build a hot rod. And I heard about this one in a barn, and I went to look at it. I, mean, I talked to the fellow that owned it, and he said he wanted $125 for basically just the body. Right. Um, there was a frame uh, under it, of course, and, and some wheels and tires, but they were flat. All the tires were flat. I took my dad because he, he needed to help me subsidize it. Mm -hmm. So he looked at me and he said, you really want this thing? I said, 
yeah, I do. I thought I could make something out of it. Mm -hmm. So he was okay with it. Mm -hmm. And my mom was on board with it. So we bought, we brought her home. Right. But can you imagine buying a 1988 car today and, and having the same passion to, <laughs> no. to, to build? But <laughs> didn't cars seem very old back then? They, they did to me. Yeah, they did. But I just, I just liked the hot rod concept. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put a big engine and a small body, and that was... Now, I, I mentioned this um, to another guy I just spoke with yesterday, and we were talking about, you know, the, basically the innocence of hot rodding. It was, it was uh, everything was a fresh slate. You know, today they build the hot rods, you know, you, you basically have a recipe and, mm -hmm. and part sources that are everyone uses mm -hmm. and you basically come up with something you, you have to paint it a different color yeah there's a lot of you know uh imagination in them but it isn't like no i i related to uh you know a child uh maybe in kindergarten doing some art not that this is mm -hmm. you know that level but it but the innocence of of you can't duplicate that again today it's like an era that was once was well, they're one of a kind. Yeah. This is one of a kind. They're, right. They're today cookie cutter hot rods. You go into the catalogs, you can order the frame, and you could you could practically order anything you want mm -hmm. to meet your desire. Where we had to go find our parts. Mm -hmm. But it seems today almost um, um, there's a mixture of eras. You know, they they pick the best of the the 50s, 60s, 70s, and they mm -hmm. kind of mix it together, and then they come up with some nice stuff. Oh, yeah. But still, it's, it's, it's imitating what once was. This is, this is the actual, and, and, and I bring this point up because this particular car sir, is a real survivor of that innocent age when, mm -hmm. when you, you actually built something to show the world, mm -hmm. and it was... F you, built, uh, you built it to show your ideas, how it should look. Right. You know, it doesn't have metal flake paint, and that was a big deal back in those days. Yeah. If you had a metal flake paint job, that was special. Mm -hmm. And I loved them, they were beautiful. Couldn't afford it, so I painted this myself, mm -hmm. Corvette Blue. Just Ditzler lacquer is what it is. Right. But, so that point being is that this is the original Ditzler lacquer when the car was built? Corvette Blue. Yep. Wow. 70 Corvette Blue. That's, that's simply amazing. And, you know, some of the things on the car, like, um, you know, if you look at the, it's almost a, a, a crude effect in a way, but still interesting and, and really looks period correct is, uh, you know, the cowl, the way you engine turned it and so forth. I mean, you, you didn't have, you didn't bring it somewhere and say, no. I want a perfect engine turned <laughs> No hell, you made it yourself, right? And I and I made it because I saw a picture somewhere in a hot rod magazine with that concept, and I thought, well, I knew I knew a tinsmith that could supply me with the aluminum, hmm. and I just did a little experimenting, and, and that's what what it turned out. It's not perfect, you know. Yeah, but, but it's it's pretty neat that uh, it's still there. You didn't try. To, Somebody didn't try to refine it right. or, or order up a, a, you know, you can order a sheet of that stuff in perfect, oh, sure. in perfect rows and, you know, yeah. and, and, but it, it's, it survives. If you took a photograph from 63, mm -hmm. there's, it's everything is matching up. Same thing, yep. So, I mean, it's, it's incredible that the same engine block is in there, the, you know. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were mentioning the, like the shocks, they're friction type shocks, so that's what you would have done in the day, and it looks really, really cool. That's what we would have done other than hang some tubular shocks on the front if, if you wanted to do that. Yeah. I thought this looked a little neater, you know, and it, oh, yeah. it dampens the yeah. this front end shocking a little bit. I mean, it's... Yeah. So the front end is, uh, looks like, uh, is that well, that's, Model A or is it 32 or something? That's one of the Dago axles. Back, oh. in, back in the day, you could buy those. A guy in San Diego, I believe, I, I don't have all that information, but yeah. I've been told that he would take a Model A axle and actually heat it up to the point where oh, he could... Oh, that's right. They did and, do that. And that's what this is. And you you could order the drop, depending on what you want. Exactly. Wanted. So, yeah, this probably is about a five or six inch drop or something. Well, at least four. At least four. At yeah. least four, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And then, of course, the headlight props, those are something that were plentiful could, in the you, day. You could buy those, yeah. You could buy those, and the headlights are... That's a kind of a custom yeah. light that I put together. I'm uh, getting back to the axle, just, just so you know. Hmm. The fellow that had that little roadster that I kept an eye on when I'm, when I'm younger, and of course I started building this when I'm older, but he happened to have this axle under his house trailer where he lived. And I bought this axle from him. So and, it had, uh, had it been new or? No, it was used. Used in some other hot rod. Yeah, he used it. Oh, wow. he, he built several hot rods. But okay. I said, hey, if I can make it work, hmm. I'd be interested. But anyway, that I just want to share that because that's how you did it. You know, you talk yeah. to guys that had parts that you may have been able to make work for your own purpose, and that's how you did it. Oh yeah, especially I mean, if you think the history, the, you know, the axle goes back to the earliest days. Then it must be yeah, an axle 40s, from the probably from probably the forties, yeah. Sure, but uh, I mean, the rear end is a fifty-six Chevrolet. Fifty-six Chevrolet, okay. Yep. So it's a traction. So I mean, people did a lot of things in combination in those days. You yeah. know, either you stuck with Mercury or Chevrolet or, and you said the steering box was a pickup truck or fifty six Ford, fifty six Ford, mm -hmm. junkyard. Again, I needed a steering gear. I didn't have one, mm -hmm. so I looked. I pursued some resources and talked to some people, and yeah, that fifty six Ford will bolt right in. Right. Hey, that's all I needed to hear. Um, but. Uh, you know, as far as performance parts for the engine and all that, that was like a guy that used to be really famous around here, uh, Jack Brilliard, yes. was part of what year? That would have been 64 maybe? Six, well, that was closer to the racing period when I raced this, more like 65. Oh, so. He, he helped me build the heads yeah. with the special grind and valves. Um, the camshaft came from um, Schleiper Speed Shop in Milwaukee. Okay. Um, solid lifters. Mm -hmm. So it's a little rattly and noisy when it mm -hmm. runs, but that's mm -hmm. that's what worked, you know. Mm -hmm. Pistons are racing pistons. They're 12 to 1 compression. Picked those up locally. I think Jack helped me with that. So all of that, those parts are still in the engine? Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, wow. And it's drivable. Yeah? It's, it's drivable. Yeah. So brakes are what are well, those? Early Ford. Um, okay. I'm not sure what a hydraulic. Era, uh, but like the Ford Mercury, same as anybody would do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. These are self-energizing. Oh, they're not the old style. Or are they? Maybe they are. No, these are self-energizing. Okay. The, and the rear brakes are, of course, the '56 Chevy. So right. it, it stops quite well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, a transmission is a three-speed Chevrolet. Yeah. Yep. With a her shifter. Mm -hmm. Rear end gears are four, five, six, so it gets off the line pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and the interior, some of those custom touches you thought up at the time? Yeah, I, I found a Galaxy, 63 Galaxy 500 with ah. buckets in the junkyard. Yep. And the price was right. Oh, and that's uh, interesting. George, I think it was George at Belly Auto Parts. I bought those from. Not, I don't, not positive on that, but I think it right. was. But they look like they would fit, and they do. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. yeah, it does and they're pretty good, comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. But it's even incredible that all of that survived without somebody. Yeah. So, well, you know, the, the man that owned years, it, you think somebody would have done something to it. The man that owned it had a passion for original study type hot rods, I believe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have a, a conversation with him, you know, as a as an everyday thing, but. I do know that he is quite interested in older hot rods, and but of course my son he kept after him. Mm -hmm. My dad would needs his car back, and I did I need it? Probably not, but it's kind of neat to have it back. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Did, what are the plans in the future? I mean, you know, we all well, have to say goodbye at some point, but it, you want to keep it in the family? Yeah, I'm thinking my son Mark probably will eventually. Do something with it. I, I had toyed with the idea of maybe, maybe upgrading the frame, <coughs> putting some new suspension on it, make it a little more hand so it handles a little better. Mm -hmm. But I did talk to some people and they said, no, no, leave it alone. Just leave it the way. I it would is. say leave it alone. Yeah. 
That's, that's what's so crazy about the car that somebody <laughs> didn't say, hey, I, let's put the better shocks on or let's do something. Yeah. But, you know, because, because of that era, yeah. that wouldn't and have been. So it's, that's why it's here. It's, it's, we look at it and we, I appreciate it's here. And I get several positive comments, you know, boy, that's really neat to have your first mm -hmm. car back or your original hot rod on. And it is, it really mm -hmm. is. But there was a, you know, in the early 60s, there was a handful of people in the area that were in the culture. And mm -hmm. it wasn't like California, LA. It was, it was but, it, but it was still strong enough that everybody kind of knew everybody. When you saw a hot rod, when you're driving in your modern iron and, you're, and you saw a hot rod, you probably knew who it was because there weren't that many, like right. you said. There were a handful. Now here's the big question. Did you ever get in trouble driving that car? <laughs> Actually, I was pretty conservative. Yeah. Because I, I didn't want to afford speeding tickets. Mm -hmm. I mean, I probably could have afforded them, but I had other things I wanted to spend my money on. So I was pretty conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, did I do a burnout here and there? You bet. But so, just street racing, I really didn't do much of that. You did more at the track you yeah. wanted to do something. Exactly. But there was a lot of history with, I mean, the car actually ran KK Sports Arena, which became Wisconsin International. Yes. So, Yes. I mean, you must have been there in 65 during the opening era. 66 and 67. Well, 66, 67. So yeah. that, I mean, that was pretty just the birth of the place, really. Yeah. Gravel pit, all yeah. gravel. Yeah, it was a push start if you didn't run on starter, you know. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. I ran in low 12s mm -hmm. most of the time. Well, that was pretty quick D, for D, the day. C and D altered class is what I was yeah. running in, yep. And it was fun, a lot mm -hmm. of competition. One particular coupe I ran against all the time when we did go on Sunday is he always seemed to edge me out at the end. Yeah. But I know he ran Sonico Blue Gas, I didn't. I ran the regular pump high test, you know, so mm -hmm. I, that probably had a little bearing on it, but okay. his was a three window coupe, this was a five. Maybe a little weight difference, I don't know, but mm -hmm. it, was, it was competitive, it was mm -hmm. fun. Did they actually have to sell the track, uh, the gasoline at the track, the racing gas, or where did you find that? Well, they, I don't know, they had racing gas available, but I didn't, I didn't buy it because it was pretty expensive. Must have been hard to find though. You know, it Probably was. Yeah. I don't know if we had it around here. I don't think we did because this gentleman I'm talking about, I think he came from Manitowoc or somewhere mm -hmm. else, Two Rivers maybe. <coughs> But, uh, so, I mean, you had a lot of fun. The car went away. It, it was gone nearly, you said, 39 years. 39 years. And, uh, well, you know, the, when I saw it at the Appleton Car Show last year, it was like I, I was really, really uh, taken back by what I saw because, you know, I grew up with that myself. Sure, sure. And uh, all I can say is I, I just really appreciate this car, and uh, I can't believe that it survived like this. And... Uh, it was a great pleasure. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Thank I you. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thank you.